How we doing guys? Mike Fantasia here with Powell Rods and Woodrow Rattlers and as always repping the squad over at Swimbait New England. Today I wanted to leave the big bait talk behind me and kind of get into a more conventional method of fishing that's still a lot of fun, one of the very few conventional methods I'm still throwing and that's hollow body frog fishing. Uh, this can be a very rewarding technique but it's a bit of a puzzle that needs to be put together in order for it to pay off. As far as I'm concerned there's two big factors when it comes to turning those blow-ups into a boated fish and what they are is having the proper gear and having the patience required to set that hook at the right time and put that bass in the boat. When I speak of gear, what I mean with when frog fishing you need to leave the spinning gear behind you. This is a bait casting technique. If you're not comfortable with a bait casting rod or reel I will in time make another video that hopefully will help you guys make that switch. But if you want to go out and you want to catch fish throwing a hollow body frog, you need a 7 foot or bigger bait casting rod and you need it paired with a fast gear ratio, 7-1-1 if you can find it, bait casting reel. You need to go ahead and spool that reel with 40 to 65 pound braided line. I recommend die with Samurai for the line. And if you cannot find that, Power Pro will do just fine. Now some of you guys that are still using the 8 to 10 pound mono, and it might sound like a bit of a stretch going up to 40 to 65 pound line, I assure you get some braided line, check it out. You'll find it's actually thinner in diameter than the big thick mono. There's no stretch. It helps dig those hooks in, and you're not going to lose fish that are just stronger than you. That's not going to happen when using 40 to 65 pound braided line. You got to think when frog fishing, you're in the muck, you're in the weeds, you're in big heavy mats, and when you're bringing that fish home, you're not just bringing him home, but 10, 15 pounds of lettuce on top of him. So that's why it's important to have a good frogging rod, and I recommend the Powell. It's a fantastic rod. You should all check it out. You need a good fast reel, so once you do dig those hooks home, just in a few turns of the handle, you can get that fish in the boat, and you need good strong line that you can rely on. It's going to put up with all the mess, and it's not going to let that fish off the hook, and it's going to get him into the boat without any thought of that line snapping on you. The other most important thing when it comes to frog fishing is patience. Patience is such a big key. In fact, it's, it's the biggest key. It took me a few years to get to the point where I am now that if he eats my frog, he's coming in the boat 100% of the time. And that all has to do with patience and setting the hook at the right time. I've asked guys when I was learning, when do you set? And the answers I was given are, Mike, you wait two seconds in. Well, I waited two seconds. I set my hook. It didn't guarantee that fish was coming in. Then other people would tell me, Oh, you got to confirm the frog's under. Once the frog's under and you can't see it anymore, set the hook. Well, that's something else that wouldn't guarantee me the fish. Sure, it worked from time to time, but I wasn't batting a thousand like I am now. So it took time and patience to figure out what you need to do and when to set that hook. And here it is. You're going to get the blow-ups on day one, so you've got to capitalize on them. When that blow-up comes, you need to first confirm that that frog has been taken under. Once you confirm your frog is under and he's not coming back up, your head then goes to a swivel. Between your frog and your line, you want to watch for your line to run. Either that or until you feel the weight of the fish on your rod. So you want your head on a swivel. You've gotten your blow up, you've confirmed your frog is under, and now it's back and forth between your line, reconfirming that that frog is not floated back up, and in time, I assure you, almost always, the fish eats it and runs. It's very rare that a fish eats it and just sits under. Although I will tell you what to do in that situation as well. So, frog goes under, you confirm it, looking at your rod. Once your line starts to run or you feel the weight of that fish, boom, swing for the fences. And you will immediately feel the weight of that fish on the other end, keep the tension, just a few turns of the reel and you should be able to get him right to the boat with the proper equipment we talked about earlier. In the rare case that you confirm your frog is under and that line never runs and you never feel the weight, 
Give it 15 seconds if at the most, and boom, swing for the fences. Sometimes that fish will just take it and go right under. You swing, you'll know right away if he's there, and you got nothing to lose if he's not. These are the things that help me start boating frogfish on the regular. Now I'll get into the gear and the frogs I use real quick. I only use three. I use the live target frog. I use the river to sea frog. And I use the spro frog. But not just any spro frog. I use the spro king daddy, which you can see in comparison here, is about twice the size of the larger live target or river to sea frog. I use these three brands because they're the most reliable. They very rarely fail you and they will last you throughout a whole bunch of fish. Once you get it down and you're feeling more confident with the smaller frogs here, I highly recommend picking up the King Daddy and making the switch to that. It follows the ideology of the big bait scene. Bigger bait, bigger fish, and so far it has held true. That's it guys. Any questions you have, don't be afraid to ask. I really appreciate you tuning in. Until next time, Thanks again.